Hi guys, welcome to the new Simple FOC project and Simple FOC library demonstration video. This time I'm very happy to be showing you the Simple FOC balancer. In this video we'll quickly pass through the mechanical components and the code of this robot and spend a lot of time testing it and even torturing it a little. Balancing robots are always a bit tricky to design. Building one includes a lot of choices, like mechanical structure, motors, sensors, microcontrollers, control algorithm, and all of them have to be chosen very well in order for the robot to stay upright. So in this video, I'd like to show you that BLDC motors are a great choice for balancing robots, and because of their awesome dynamics, the robots are not just very responsive and robust, but also simpler to design and control. And very silent. We will start the assembly with this 3D printed center block and we are going to use two gimbal BLDC motors. These motors have hollow shafts and to attach the sensors on one I 3D printed the mount and the other just has M4 screw. We are going to screw them into the block with two M3 screws and afterwards we are going to screw the sensors. The sensors that I've used are the encoders but any type of position sensor that's supported by the simple FOC library will do. I just happen to like these ones a lot. These encoders have configurable numbers of impulses per revolution and I've configured them both to have 500. Just click them in and make sure that the motors spin freely. The wheels are also 3D printed and as tires I'm using the middle sections of these RC car tires that you can buy in bulk on eBay. The wheels are screwed to the motors directly with four M3 screws. The next step is the IMU or the accelerometer and in my case I'm using the MPU6050 with I square C communication. It's very cheap and it has great performance. The top plate is mostly intended for carrying stuff and it doesn't have a real structural purpose so you can avoid it if you don't need it. But I really like how it looks. Then we add the modular microcontroller mount which is made to be able to simply switch in between different microcontrollers and drivers. And in this video we'll be using this ESP32 uh, based D1R32 board and STM32 Nucleo. And we will start with ESP32. You just mount it with two screws. As the BLDC drivers we'll be using two simple FOC shields. And here are the pinouts that I've used. Just make sure to enable I2C pull-ups and LDO on only one of the boards. And I just wanted to add that any BLDC driver that's supported with the Simple FOC library will do. You don't need to use Simple FOC shields. Then what's left to do is some cabling. Common power cable. The encoder cables. Then we just stack the shields. Connect the encoders, connect the I2C communication, connect the motors to the motor terminals. And the final step is mounting the battery. In my case I'm using 3S LiPo battery. Then just plug the battery in and see if all LEDs are on, on the ESP, on the IMU and on the two shields. And all the LEDs are on, so we can proceed to the coding. To program the microcontroller, just plug the USB cable through the hole in the bottom. To start the balancer code, let's first test the IMU. For this, we just include first the IMU hel helper's header file, which includes all the IMU related functions. And for this, I've used I2C dev library in my project, but you can use any other IMU library in a similar manner. 
So to test it, first in the setup we call init IMU and in the loop we first check if we have received new data from the IMU and then uh, display it to the serial terminal if yes. So in the se serial terminal we'll see the IMU is calibrating and we have an angle. Okay, let's add the BLDC control code. First, we add the simple FOC library. Then we add the helper header file, which is balancer pinout, which manages different pin names for ESP32 and Nucleo boards. Then we add the instances of BLDC motors and BLDC drivers that we are using. And we do the same things for encoders. Next step is in setup function, we configure encoders and drivers and link them to their motors. Then we specify that both of the motors are going to be controlled in the voltage torque control mode. And finally, we add the monitoring and initialize the motors and the field oriented control algorithm. The last step is to add field oriented control and motion control routines to the loop function. And to test all this, we are going to set 2 volt voltage command to the both of the motors. We upload the code, connect the battery, and in the serial terminal, we can see that IMU is calibrating. We will see that one motor is aligning, the second motor, and they are both moving. Here, make sure that both motors spin in the same direction and also make sure that you have a good IMU reading after connecting the motors. At the end, we add the control algorithm. I have implemented a very simple PID scheme here. One PID for velocity, the throttle, and the other for stabilization. And the user can set the throttle and steering commands to control the balancer's orientation and position. The controller outputs are the target voltages to be set to motors. The PID parameters are configured using PID controller classes provided by the simple FOC library, and you can easily change them by changing the values in the constructor. User commands will be handled with the throttle and the steering variables. These variables are intended to be updated via Bluetooth or some other way by user. And basically what you need to do now is just upload the code. And once when it's uploaded, we can disconnect the USB cable and we can connect the battery. Then we just need to wait for the IMU to calibrate. And for both of the motors to align. And our balancer is ready. ESP32 has on board Wi Fi and Bluetooth, which means that we do not need any additional hardware to remote control it. I'm using a simple joystick mobile application I've created a few years ago, but there is really a lot of them for each of the mobile platforms. And even the Arduino code will be very similar, whichever one you choose. I'm really not the best driver. <laughs> but as you can see, Robot is pretty agile and uh, very robust. And once when I got used to it, it became very fun to have around. But now let's do some proper testing. Let's test how it handles carrying objects off center. This is too easy. 
What if we drop it? This still seems too easy. Let's try something a bit harder. Now let me show you how easy it is to change the microcontroller. Basically all that you need to do is unscrew the ESP32 and screw in the STM32 Nucleo. The code that we wrote earlier will work without any changes with the Nucleo. We don't even need to change the parameters of the PIDs. The only difference is the handling of the Bluetooth because Nucleo requires Bluetooth module. But even they are pretty cheap and the code is very similar. Let's continue testing with the new microcontroller. This time we'll test the combination of carrying capacity and the center of mass shift. Okay, this we already knew it was too easy. Half kilo is really not bad. Let's try something even harder to read. Okay guys, I know what you are going to ask me. Can this robot actually do something useful? So therefore we prepare the real world scenario. Robot has to go down the steps, go over the plank, kick the ball through the door and close the door behind it. The expectations are high, but let's see how it does. <laughs> Still not the best driver. Okay guys, I really hope you liked this video. And that it got you motivated to use the BLDC motors in your projects as well. As always, you can find all the links in the description and thanks a lot for watching.